And good evening, everybody, and welcome to West Hartford High School Sports here on Channel 5 as presented by the War Chief Sports Council. Tonight, boys swimming as the Connor Chieftains take on the Hall Warriors. Pete Lamoureux along with John Smichetti and Bob Swain. As always, thank our fine crew from Channel 5 and our volunteers as well. Senior night in the pool, also a chance for Connor to avenge a 98-80 loss to Hall from a year ago. A chance for veteran coaches to match wits. John McClure in his 41st year for Hall. Jen Pollard, nine years at Connor. The last three as the head coach, Diane Coburn, the diving coach for both teams. Hall comes in at 7-4 and four on the season, 3-1 and one in conference play, and Connor Five and five, also three and one within the conference. Pleased to be working with Connor girls coach John Spaghetti tonight. And John, when we talk about the Warriors, we start with Jack Hosey as the best times this year for Hall in five different events. Impressive. Yeah, thanks, Peter. Uh, I'd like to start by thanking you and Channel Five for inviting me to join this uh, broadcast of the Connor Hall Boys Swim Meet. Uh, uh, Jack is um, going to be swimming tonight in the 53 and 100 free. Top swimmer in those events for either team. Uh, expecting to probably pull a couple of very important first places for all in that event, uh, in the meet today. And um, it's the kind of guy that a coach like John McClure or anyone likes to have on the team because it's it's a go-to guy. You pencil him into the lineup and you can count on a couple of first places. And on the Connard side of things, let's highlight Sean Burke. Yeah, Sean's a uh, four-year swimmer here. He's a senior captain. Uh, typically swims the distance events, the 200 freestyle and 500 freestyle. Uh, he's consistently been breaking two minutes in that two free, and I expect him to be in a very, very tight race in the two free tonight. John, as we look at uh, what we have entailed for this evening, 12 events. Why don't you break down the order of things and how we expect everything to transpire tonight? Okay, for those who aren't familiar with the high school meet, uh, as Pete indicated, there are 12 events. Three or relays, eight individual swimming events, and there's one diving event. An athlete can compete in up to four events, two of which may be individual. The scoring, for those of you who might be trying to do it as we go along, uh, relays score eight points for first, four points for second, and two points for third. The individual swimming and diving events will score six points for first, and then four, three, two, one with. Uh, no points for sixth place. If you do the math, there's about 186 points in the meet. Uh, so the magic number that the coaches shoot for is 94. Once you get 94, you can't lose the meet. So um, that's and Hall the had the nine. Hall had the 98 last year. Yeah, Hall had the 98 last year. So depending on when they get it, if if you get it before that 12th event, you get 94 there. The the last race is more for pride than anything else. Sure. John, uh, you made some great points as uh, we prepped for the match last night on the phone. You talked about the comparison and contrast, more of a contrast between this and those who watch Olympic swimming. And uh, that's something you can highlight uh, as we go along. But uh, a brief overview as to what makes this more impressive in terms of uh, the swimmers, in terms of stamina. Yeah, so, so we're getting ready here for this first event. Uh, we'll touch on that in just a minute. 200 medley relay here. I just want to mention real quick, Pete, that I looked at some times. Uh, Paul has been a 146 this year, and Connor a 149. But with the adrenaline that, that's in running through this these kids' veins right now, wouldn't surprise me if you need to pull somewhere around the 144 to win the race tonight. And to the novices at home, John, how big is the pool, and how many laps does 200 meters entail? So, uh, in High school swimming, we swim yards. It's it's a 25-yard uh, length pool, so it's going to be each swimmer here is doing two lengths of the pool. Uh, we're in the breaststroke leg right now. It looks like uh, Andrew Swain has got a slight lead on Tom Costello as they come off of the turn. And, uh, what's what's the key to this besides endurance, John, to this particular race? Is there any particular strategy that you would tell your kids? Yeah, one of the things you've got to do is be very, very crisp on the relay exchanges. Um, you're allowed to be in motion uh, as long as your feet still have contact with the blocks when the swimmer touches. So you want to have your momentum carrying you in for that start. Say, don't get stuck on the blocks. How many different kids involved here? Uh, each team in the relay has four swimmers. First leg is a backstroke, then we have a brushstroke, butterfly, and then the freestyle. 
freestyle. That was a tremendous start by the Connors with I think that's Ben Alton. And uh, he's first into that 175 turn coming out. Uh, pulling away nicely. Uh, this is going to be a surprise here. Uh, going in, Paul was the favorite. Uh, here it is, any kind of 144, which is pretty much where I thought they were going to have to be. There's that adrenaline kicking in, as you yeah, talked about. I, nice call, Coach. I, I see it over and over again. <laughs> so, um, and it looks like the third place was uh, taken by Conard also with a 151. And I believe when I was looking that uh, the Conard B relay and the Hall B relay had both been around the best time of 154. So a nice three-second drop for them there, too. So... So if you can unofficially dole out the points so far. So barring any disqualifications, which um, I wouldn't know about yet from here, it would look like Connard's off to a 10-4 lead, having taken first and third, scoring eight points and two points to Connard's four. Mm -hmm. so, to four. So, so that's a great start for them, for yeah, sure. Yeah, because I, I think when I talked to Coach Pollard, I asked her what she was expecting in the first relay. Uh, she was hoping to to take first, but with Hall having the edge uh, during the previous times during the season, uh, she was really, I think, going to count on six points. So, okay. So right now she's probably tracking a little bit ahead of where she thought. So She's plus four in her mindset she's then right now. plus four in her mind, but you know what? Every one of these races coming up. Uh, and any change of places between third and fourth or uh, fifth and sixth or whatever it is, Every change of place from what they expected swings two points because it's one more or one less. So, so to reiterate, John, again, to highlight, who was the key athlete for Connard in, in that uh, race? I'll tell you, the, the butterfly touch, the third leg on each team looked pretty close. Uh, it just looked like um, Ben Arthur had a tremendous start and um, at the breakout uh, taking the lead in. And, and Ben Arkey, just a freshman. Just a freshman. Yes. Amazing. Swam for the West Hartford Waves. Yes, he did. That, that's one of the, uh, it's the park and rec team here that helped feed our system. Now, the race here to 200 free. Uh, Ian Parker swimming in four for Hall is probably a favorite. Uh, and then I would expect a big battle between uh, Sean Burke and Connor for the uh, second okay. and third. And Ian Harker, just a sophomore, called by John LeClure, one of his most versatile swimmers that he has. Yes. Um, I, when I kind of looked at this meet myself, I thought Harker might be in the fly in the backstroke. Uh, John's out the season here in the 2-3. Uh, looks like now, oh, like Sean Burke is really pushing Ian. Uh, that's maybe a little bit of a surprise. Uh, over in lane two, must be like now, Tom is over in lane two, so I want to keep an eye on Tom over there. But Sean's really pushing Ian right here. So. Again, Ian Harker tried to beat his best time of 156.99 on the season so far in this event. And, and, and any swimmer, you know, even when you get to that point nine nine, you're yeah. at 156. It doesn't matter what that fraction is. <laughs> gotcha. So we're, we're, we're coming into the 150 turn, so we've got one... Uh, one lap to go. Ian's got a, probably about a half a body length lead. Again, if you joined us late, this is the second of the 12 swimming events. Connard up 10 to 4 after the first event. So it looks like Coach McClure is getting that win he needed out of uh, Ian. Uh, although he was being pressed very, very hard by Sean here right at the end. Uh, yeah, so there's probably a lifetime best for Sean. It looks like he's just a tad off, but just enough. All you got to do is win. That's right. 0.01 gets you the point. Sure, sure. And while he missed his best time by a quarter of a second, it uh, was still good enough for him. So John Spaghetti is also very good with his math <laughs> and being a fellow left-hander. It looks like that event may have gone, oh, oh yeah, the times are still up there. Uh, just 
wait for the scoreboard to stop flashing here. I think it's a 1-3 finish for Hall, which would give them nine points. Okay. Connor will take seven. So 10, 4, 9, 7. So 17-13 seven, overall. 17-13. A, a football score for, for the Connor Chieftains. There you go. Two touchdowns and a field goal. That's right. Matt and uh, Rob Sersasson will be proud of that for sure. So we're getting ready for the... Uh, yes, what's, what's event number three here, John? 200 IM. Uh, each swimmer, unlike the medal relay, where it's four swimmers, each doing a different skill, this is one swimmer doing all four skills. Oh, my. So a real endurance test for these kids. So we we'll start off with a 50 butterfly. Uh, we'll transition into a 50 backstroke, then a 50 breaststroke, and then a 50 freestyle. Excellent. And who might uh, we see as a couple of the favorites in this one? The favorite here is probably going to be Spondon Rath. He's a senior from Connor. This is actually his first year with the team. He didn't swim his first three years. Moved over from India, according yeah. to your daughter. Yeah, he's been in town for a while. He's been swimming with a club team. Uh, he decided to come out to the high school team. Interviewed, interviewed at Harvard. Oh, did he? Yes, he did. It wasn't there. So this is uh, an event that very often a discriminating stroke here is the breaststroke. Typically, to be a good animal, you need to be a good breaststroke. Okay. That's what separates you. Spano has a very solid breaststroke, so if he can carry any kind of lead into the breaststroke, he should be in good shape. Oh. It looks like Paul's uh, pushing, though, for two and three. And uh, Connor's holding the four or five positions. So he just hit the uh, backstroke turn. Now they're coming into the breaststroke. Now, is this the third of the four legs? Yep. Okay. Uh, just a little over half a minute. Jack Russo over in lane two is making a little bit of a push there. Uh, Jack's also a breaststroke. Uh, Jack's breaststroke probably about a 107 in his breaststroke. He's very uh, close to making the states in breaststroke, yeah. uh, John said. Yeah, so, so he's a solid breaststroke. Uh, Small lead coming in, we have to hold on in his 50 freestyle right here. Uh, we'll see how this comes down. This would be a huge, huge upset for Paul if Jack can come out there. But it looks like Spondon with the 175 turn is going to hold him off. Okay. We're looking at about a body and a half length. That's a lot of pool to make up. Sure. It looks like it's going to be a 1-4-5 uh, finish for Connor. So they'll score nine points. Paul will score seven. So they just kind of flipped back what happened in the last race. So 26-20 is going to be the overall advantage for Connor after, uh, after round three here. Really impressed so far, John, with the intensity of the crowd here. Uh, Bob Swain was telling us they uh, limit the ticket count to about 250. And uh, they're packed in here, and they're making a lot of noise in support of their two teams. Yeah, most most of our dual meets will probably see you know, maybe a quarter of this. Uh, one of the things that limits it too is it's an afternoon meet. Sure. Not everybody can make it you know, with their work schedule. Exactly. Uh, so this meet tonight, I mean, here's the highlight. Uh, Jack's coming up now. I think Jack's going to be in four. So Jack's a solid favorite. So uh, see how. And introduce uh, this uh, fourth event for us, John. What yeah, so it's a 50 freestyle. Okay. Um, one of the fastest, most exciting races um, when we're not talking a relay. Relays are always, always my favorite. I see. But the 53 down and back, I mean, this race is over in 23 seconds. So. Exactly. And Jack Hosey's uh, best time this year, 22.79. So okay. right, to your, right to your point. So, yeah, I mean, I'm looking up across the pool here at the, the record board for... Uh, for Hall, and that's probably not too far off of uh, the record of a looks like a 2211 set in 2002 by Alex Wald. Okay. I'm trying to read it off the board over there. But, uh, well, you have better vision than I. <laughs> <laughs> so, who knows? Maybe at the end of the year, when he's fully rested, he'll be able to put up yeah. that record. Again, he's just a junior, and. Uh, 
They honored the seniors here tonight, and we talked about one thing about this Hall team. It's an experienced squad. Nine of their 17 swimmers are seniors. Now, you're a veteran coach, John. What does that do for John McClure going forward? What type of an obstacle does that present he's, for him? He's going to need to reach into his, uh, the ranks of the school system, and, and hopefully they can get a couple of good, strong athletes to come out. I've often found that getting an athlete down here and a coach can make a good swimmer out of him over the course of, of several years. Sure. So, it might not all happen in the first year, but... Well, we, we've taken kids with no swimming experience and made them state open swimmers. So. That's awesome. Yeah, it is. This is going to be quick. Uh, let's see who breaks up. Looks like... Uh, and then Jack Hosey of Hall, the favorite. Uh, Jack's already half a body length ahead here coming into the curve. Who for Conard are we watching here? Alex Smart and Austin Conard. Uh, this is one of those things that you've got to go to the scoreboard to look at the finish. It looks like Paul takes one five, uh, one, one and five. So that's uh, going to be s seven points. So it looks like Condor may have pulled off a two three four. Wow. Uh, two three four. So here's a case where Hall takes first first place in the event. Yeah. But Condor actually outscores him in the event. That's uh, something you and seven. I were talking about yeah, uh, so before the match. Sometimes depth can make a big difference. And uh, I've got the score right here now. I'm looking at 35 27. Um, Connor with an eight point bulge. Yep. And I think what they're getting ready for is uh, what we would call an exhibition 50. They're going to run one more heat. Uh, these swimmers are not eligible for scoring. Oh, okay. Um, it's, you have an 18, everyone's practicing six days a week, a couple hours a day. So this is their chance to raise. And maybe put up a time that will make the coach think in the next week they should be swimming in one of the scoring so, talk, talk about the, the dynamic of practicing side by side with your crosstown rival. Yeah, it's uh, it's something that most of your sports here in West Hartford and other towns don't have to do. Your football, your soccer, your basketball, they're all on their own campus. Uh, West Hartford opted many years ago to build one community pool instead of a pool in each high school and uh, they share it's an 11 lane pool so for the boys season each team gets a uh, four lane for practice and there's uh, diving going on for the same time slot <coughs> so you're training right next to the cross town bike amazing and a lot of these kids you know came up from the various programs together so they know each other whether it was swimming as a youngster on a the waves team or, or even on a club team. Maybe they played soccer together, things like that. Yeah. Now they're practicing together. Um, which most don't have to uh, deal with that. Sure. Well, it's a good time to tell everybody that the War Chief Sports Council would like to thank our many fine sponsors, including those at the all state level Keating Insurance, MACA, Plumbing and Heating, Reed and Reach PC, Counselors at Law, ESPN, the Entertainment and Sports Programming Network. College Prep Express, and the McConnell Family Law Group. Thanks to one and all for your sponsorship of the War Chief Sports Council. And for more info, go to their website at www.war-chief.net. That's war-chief.net. I'd also like to thank our all-conference supporter. That would be Allied Printing. They were the longtime printers of the yearbooks, media guides, and programs of the dearly departed Hartford Whalers, who have been gone 20 years this April, much to my and everybody else's chagrin. So going forward, four races in the books, and uh, overall impression so far, John, 35-27, uh, Connard in front. Yeah, I'm going to guess if I went over and talked to Coach Pollard, she's um, Happy probably, so yeah, probably a little bit ahead of the pace. I think those individual events went pretty much as she thought, but she haven't picked up those extra four points in the medley relay certainly going to help her going forward but again anything can happen one of the things that uh, high school swimmers have to face that you don't see so much with the olympic swimmers is 
the number of races they swim in this hour and a half. The Olympic yeah. swimmer very often will have a trial or semifinal in the morning, and then their main uh, their finals in the evening. So you have hours and hours between the races. High school swimming is much different. A lot of these kids are swimming four events in an hour and a half, and it's not uncommon. I just look at the lineup that when a coach is looking for a strategic matchup, they may actually have a swimmer go from one event into the next event. Wow. And uh, I think it's like he was the uh, backstroker in the Connor B relay, which took third, got out of the water, and uh, went from, uh, stayed right in lane three, actually didn't even change lanes, and got climbed on the block for the next race and swam two three. Talk about the endurance that so, you have and the stamina. That's really amazing to be able to do that. And just the general comparison, that's an excellent point that you make with the comparison contrast with, with the Olympians that you know might have just two competitions within one particular day, morning, and night here. They're compacting everything into 90 minutes or so. Yeah, and the other thing um, that we're going to see, another swimmer, I can tell having looked at this, that's going to be uh, put through the ringer a little bit um, as we go forward is uh, my counterpart here, Bob's, Bob's son. Um, Andrew. Andrew. I think Andrew's swimming in the 500 freestyle. Uh, look in, is, I'm not sure if he's in the last relay or if he's... Yeah, so he's going to be in the 500 freestyle. Uh, then there'll be the 200 freestyle relay, 100 back, and then Andrew's going to be in the brushstroke, and then in the 4-3 relay. So he's going to do three of his events in the span of probably about 15 to 20 minutes. Wow. And one of those events is the longest event of the day. It's the 500. Um, so I'm sure that when Andrew finishes at 500, as much as he wants to cheer on his teammate in the relay, if I was his coach, I'd be telling him to get over on that bench and lay on his back and get that heart rate down a little bit. Sure. Oh, that's, I don't know about, so. I don't know what uh, John tells him, but that's what I'd be telling Andrew to do. <laughs> But, again, it's just the demand we put, have to put on these kids because the, the meat is so short. And when you have a swimmer like Andrew, who's you know, one of the top swimmers in the CCC, you absolutely have to get him in the events that are giving you the key matchup. And you just talk to the swimmer, you tell them what's expected, and they give you what you need. John, as a veteran coach yourself, I'm sure a lot of what you do and teach is technique, but... How much do you have to preach being in great shape and endurance? Is it self-taught to it's, these kids, or do you have to stay on them, so to speak? It's really about the training. It's, yeah. They have to buy into the training. They have to buy into the lineup of coaches making. Coaches doing that for a reason. They're not putting a swimmer in back-to-back -back events if they don't need to. And most of the kids love to know that the coach has that kind of confidence in them and the trust in them to just pour everything out when they get in the water. Sure. There'll be plenty of time to rest at about 9.15 tonight. <laughs> Definitely so. Again, we're in between events four and five. 35-27, Connard in front. They honored the seniors tonight, and uh, we just like to pay our own special tribute by telling you who they are. For Connard, it's Sean Burke, Tom Costello, Sam Nanny, Spandin Rath, and for Hall, Matt Cashman, Nick Giannoulis, Jonathan Picus, Andrew Swain, Sam Bidwell, Joe Marks, Joey Hockman, Dale Yu, and Alex Lazari. The nine Hall seniors and the four on the Conard side all honored before the meet began tonight. Just wanted to uh, verify the uh, score going forward. We're going to double check that yeah. score for us. Yeah, we've been trying to keep it here as we go along, but sometimes that board flashes real quick, and if we, do, well, if we you, don't capture it. Done, uh, done a good job staying on top of it so far, I'll tell you. Mike Huffman uh, is our referee. We're Chief Sports Council. I'd also like to thank our fine sponsors at the captain's level, and they include Hartford Distributors, Franklin Fine Beers, Cork and Bottle, the Babe Ruth Organization, Coastal Tool and Rob Ludkin, 
and the Conard and Hall PTO, captain's level supporters for the War Chief Sports Council. This tonight, John Smichetti is our seventh and final broadcast for the winter sports season. We're happy to bring everybody girls and boys basketball, girls and boys hockey. We had wrestling and then the swimming tonight, and then we look forward to the spring. We're going to have baseball, softball, girls and boys lacrosse, and boys volleyball. And then we're going to have our first ever broadcast next fall of girls swimming. So we look forward to that. It'll be our pleasure to have you. And I, I, I believe based on what the two uh, girls teams have coming back, it'll be another one of these crazy meets that will come down to the end. Tell us about what happened uh, in the meet uh, this year, Connor versus Hall. Ab absolutely crazy. Uh, going into that first event, uh, much like what we saw here tonight, the uh, Connor Girls A relay, had, uh, I think it only broke in two minutes one time, maybe 159, and the Hall girls had been pretty consistently below two minutes. Um, the race went off, and the Connor Girls dropped about five seconds down to a 154. Wow. Uh, it, was a, it was a big upset. Uh, again, just like uh, Coach Powell made out of the count on the win. Uh, we raced for it. We went after it. Uh, we were able to squeak that out. And I think the other thing that impressed me was our B relay ended up going faster than our A relay had all year. That's how wow. much the adrenaline and, and the atmosphere just uh, captivates it's, the swimmers, it's doesn't it? It's second to none. And we had a school record broke at that meet. Uh, freshman Kate Bell broke our school record uh, 100 butterfly uh, in that meet. It was just an outstanding race. Came down to the last meet, uh, I'm sorry, the last event. Uh, Hall needed to take first and second. Uh, Connor, we only needed to, to take second place. So uh, Coach McClure made the strategic lineup change where he did what we would call split his relay. Broke his, took a couple of swimmers out of his A relay, dropped him into the B, slowed down his A a little bit to speed up his B. And the anchor swimmer for Connor uh, was Natalie Chernis. She was a freshman, had a best best time. She did a 55. She got into water with about a three and a half second lead. And Tara Tiernan, a uh, senior for Hall, who's uh, probably the top swimmer in uh, either high school right now, she went. She broke a 52. She went a 51.80. Wow. And uh, Natalie held her off by 0.1 seconds uh, to, to swing the meet to 94, 92. Connor, I think Just, if that race went another yard and a half, Tara would have caught her. and um, That's what it came down to. Paul would have been raising the uh, banner in the gymnasium. So as you look into your crystal ball here tonight, do you anticipate that we're going to go down to the final events? Yeah, every, I've looked at results from both teams as I was trying to you know, give a little heads up for this tonight. And um, I don't see how either team could get to 94, barring some real weird circumstance, a critical DQ, a disqualification. And just to note, the, the score is not 35-27 as we had thought, it's 34-27. Okay. Um, I verified that. And I, up by a touchdown. I asked I asked Mike Huffman, our referee, I said, there must have been a disqualification in the IM. And he said, yes, there was. Oh, okay. So that's where the, I, there was a missing point. Oh. Um, normally that would go to whoever finished sixth by time. But once that point wasn't given to the sixth place swimmer, I knew it had to be the IM because there were only five scoring swimmers in the race. So I knew that DQ had to be in the IM. So. Good deductive powers there. By Mr. Smichetti. And speaking of uh, when we do the girls race, your daughter is already committed to uh, hold the chair that you're doing tonight. And she, i got to tell you, she's got a tough act to follow, doing a great job for us so far. Well, well a good so thanks, friend, thanks for joining us on the broadcast. A good friend of mine who I work with um, has said, because uh, Jennifer also works at the same company I do, so the three of us work there, and said has said on more than one occasion that Jennifer is a better version of me. Oh, <laughs> So, so she'll probably get in here and make me look uh, look bad. So. Well, we all want our kids to be better than absolutely. Yeah, well, that's 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 great. So we're getting ready for the diving. Um, each okay. diver will do six dives. Okay. Uh, 
there's a required dive. Uh, that's the, and when I say a required dive, there's five dive groups. Uh, there's forward group, back group, reverse, inward, and twisting. Okay. Every week, and they rotate it, your first dive has to be from the designated group. I'm not sure which week we're on. We'll know once they get up on the board for the first dive. Okay. So every diver will have to do a dive from that group. It can, if it's a forward, it could be a, a dive, a one somersault, a one and a half. Um, I don't have the dive sheets in front of me. So. I see. Now, when we were talking at the beginning, at the outset, about 12 events, does the 12 events include the diving? Or? Yes, it does. Okay. Yep. Diving is so, an individual event and scores the same way oh, as any of the swimming events. Okay, so we have the four swimming, four diving, and then four swimming. Is that, is that how we do it? Four swimming, diving. And that's seven swimming. Right? Seven, okay. Yep. So 417, I got four you. 417, right down. And the divers, once they begin, will use the same sequential order. Yes. Yep. So one of the things we will need to do is have quiet during the diving. I don't think right. they can hear us from here. Okay. But, um, out of respect for the safety of the divers. Sure. The divers, one of them may see a forward one and a half semifinal by the position in point six. Please hold them over the air above your head. The scores are five, five, and five and a half. It's kind of the first dive I saw. It was a forward one and a half. Okay. Uh, this is what we would call forward week. Okay. Uh, every diver will do a dive from that group as their initial dive. And that was Dale Yu diving for Hall. As I said, each diver is going to do six dives. The first dive is from the forward group. Their next five dives can be from any of the five groups, but they have to do dives from at least four of those groups. So they don't have to do, in a particular week, they don't necessarily have to do a dive from a specific group. They just have to make sure here in these last five, they cover four of the five groups. Okay. So they can certainly repeat whatever one they feel is their best or the most comfortable with. Yes. Yeah, they, uh, one of the, the harder dive groups in high school diving is the reverse group. Um, we may not see a reverse dive out of many of these divers. They may not have it yet. This is Joe Marks, who just went for Hall. What you think of that performance? That was very nice. Yeah, there you go. The scores reflect it. Six and a half. Those are the best scores we've seen so far, yeah. John. When we look across, do we see all three judges put up a six and a half? I would, if I'm doing the announcing, that's a six and a half bingo. <laughs> well, that was Nate Rosado, is that correct? Here's Nick Lazari going for the Hall Warriors. You get scores of four, four, and three. 
So uh, just a quick note on the hall divers. At the beginning of the year, I don't know that they had a returning diver with a legal dive list. Um, okay. A lot of progress has been made by the team to, um, to uh, get for people who are ready to compete in the meet. I see. It's, it's not easy. I mean, you got to get dives from dive groups. You're sometimes diving back toward the board, so it's... A little nerve-wracking for some of the oh. some of the kids. Oh, I bet. Five and scores were five and a half, six, and five and a half. So the second best scores I think we've seen across the board so far. Yeah, this is an event that should heavily favor Connor to they return um, at least three divers from last year. And I think one or two of them may have been state qualifiers. So this is an event where Coach Pollard is expecting to pick up some points, but she knows there's other events where Paul's going to be stealing those points right back. Sure. I think the 500 is going to be heavily in um, Paul's favor when we get there. Again, an interesting dynamic in the pool, Diane Cover and the diving coach for both schools. It's hard, you know, because she's working, like you said, with the kids from both teams. Um, but I think here it's, it's very simple. You just root for every every one of those divers to have their best day. And good dives of five, five, and four, those scores. So do they just take for this, John, the aggregate score of all the dives for, for both sides and then yeah, just no, award so, points? So what they're going to do, we do have nine divers today. Um, like a relay race or an individual, each team is only allowed to have six entries that are eligible to score. Okay. So three of these divers, before they start, have been designated as an exhibition. Just like we ran that extra hoop of the 53. Yeah. Where... They race, they can get a time. In fact, they can even call it out the same time. Sure. Um, but they just are not eligible to score a point in that event. So the three divers here, uh, two for common, one for all, that have been marked in the uh, uh, entry is not eligible to score points for the team. I see. Just for the individual. Basically, it's experience. So they qualify for states. So we'll take three and three, and then they'll award points for first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth, yeah. and divide it just like it were a swimming race that way. Correct. Okay. Yeah, that'll be six, four, three, two, one. Okay. And scores are three, three, one, half, three. The way the diving works here, each dive has a degree of difficulty. Mm -hmm. So when we look at the judges' judges awards, if uh, the judges' awards are, say, five, five, and five, you take, you add those up, that's 15. You multiply it by the degree of difficulty, and that's the diver's points for that dive. Oh, okay. And then you'll add up their points for all six of their dives, highest score wins. So, so that's how that So that's a lot of paperwork over at that scores table. Oh, I think a lot of math right now. They're, they're, they're keeping them busy for, uh, for a half hour yeah, to 45 whereas minutes. The, yeah, whereas the swimming events, um, pulling the times over automatically from the electronic system into the computer, and it does the scoring for you. I see. You're watching the swimming and diving competition tonight, the meet between Connard and Hall here at Cornerstone Aquatic. Pete Lamoureux along with John Smichetti. A little bit later on in the broadcast, we'll have Bob Swain join us. He's the dad of not only Andrew Swain of the Hall Warriors, but uh, also the dad of three former Swain brothers who swam for the Warriors over the last 13 years total. Yeah, yeah Pete, and I, I can tell you is uh, the counter kind of coach, those uh, Swain boys, all very talented. Um, I only coached against um, the oldest, Robert, uh, one year. That was my first year at Connor. Uh, then uh, the second, I believe, was Jack. I don't remember, I don't know what the age of the Jack is. Uh, so, uh, just ask Bob, there's three years difference, so it sounds like I would probably coach against Jack for a couple of years. Um, and then uh, Ethan was the third swimmer that, uh, from the Swain family, and Andrew being the fourth. Uh, I only saw Andrew uh, when he was a freshman when I was on the Connor team. So, but 
tell you, those Swain kids, they cause me a lot of heartache when I'm trying to get the <laughs> matchups I need. Very, very talented swimmers. You should be proud, Dad. Oh, he is. You can tell. We continue with the diving competition here. And I believe Jack went on to swim in college yeah, at Holy Cross. Yeah. So Jack's, Jack yeah, went on to swim it in college. Right. So I'm not sure if Ethan's yeah, swimming in college. No. I'll tell you, the, the college program is a lot longer, and with your studies, it, it's demanding. So anyone who can do both, it's uh, surely a tribute to their ability to manage their time. Sure, absolutely. What we did just see on the board, um, I don't see which swimmer or which diver it was. It would be called a block. If you noticed, he came out to the end of the board in his approach, stopped. Oh, didn't do the dive, went back, and I believe. So it's like a block in baseball so, for a so pitcher. It's a block. Yeah. And what they'll do is they'll, they'll score the dive, and then they will subtract two points oh my. off that score. So that's a penalty. I believe what happened was a block, I mean, not a, a failed dive, but I'd have to check. So. It's, a, it's akin to hitting a ball OB in golf. I mean, that's, yeah, a, that's, a, that's a big big penalty. <laughs> penalty in yardage, right? You're right. <laughs> I know that quite well. <laughs> oh, that looked like a two and a half. I didn't, didn't quite catch it, but I think that was a forward two and a half. Very, very difficult time. Did not score very well. It looked like he executed better than that. Yeah, it did. Um, again, we're probably... Uh, oh, do, do those scores indicate the two points? Was, so, that, the, was that the same diver? No, no, this was okay, a different was diver, different. so that was how they scored that particular dive. So um, while from here it might not have looked too bad, the officials are all right there, and they all they're right on top they all of it. scored it within a half a point of each other, so they must have saw. Sure. We had a rose-colored glasses on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so each official will independently... Get their score, and then the uh, head of referee will blow the whistle and will reveal them all at once. So there's no, okay, no no peeking sure. to see what the other guys throwing up there. <laughs> As you might see in boxing, for example. There you go. <laughs> that looked like that was a nice forward two somersault. Very nice. And nice applause from yeah. the capacity yeah. crowd here there at Cornerstone Aquatic. Yep. Yep. Very nice. That'll be a nice score. And that's. 16 times probably a degree of difficulty of 2.2, so you know, somewhere up in the mid to high 30s. Yeah. Very, very solid dive. There's that reverse we had, first one we've seen. And well done, according nice. to the judges. Absolutely. Two fives and a four and a half. Yep. So here's Dale Yu from the Hall Warriors back on the diving board. So Dale's one of the uh, new divers for, for Hall okay. um, that you know came into the season without a list. Um, so again, I just think it's impressive that he's he's got himself a list and he can compete in front of this crowd. Sure, sure. And it's not easy to get up on that board oh, in front of a couple hundred people because unlike all, swimming, all eyes on you. Absolutely. Unlike the swimming. And, and in the swimming. They're underwater a good portion of it. You're, you're standing on that board. Everybody's watching. So it's, it's hard. I give, I give these divers a lot of credit. That's their own extra degree of difficulty to have to yes. contend with that for sure. Yep. Joe Marks.
And he garners a three, three and a half, and a three from the three judges. Yep, and one of the things I've noticed tonight is the uh, fish eating very consistent. So um, you know, I've seen some meets where, you know, three, four, five. Everything here seems to be within pretty much a half a point. Half a point, so. yeah. So very, very consistent. You know, it's no different than baseball, balls and strikes. You just want the same strike zone. Exactly. That's it. Exactly. Be the same for both teams, right? Yes. Nice inward one and a half. Very nice. I think that's uh, Ben. There you go. Look at those scores. Very nice. I think, I think Ben's in his sophomore year and had an abbreviated freshman year, if I'm not mistaken. He may have... Uh, Done one of the things that would upset a coach during right before critical meet. He went skiing. Oh, and, and, and tore, I think and tore I think, ligaments I think on the phone. he might. No, I think he separated. He might have separated his shoulder. Oh, I'm not sure. okay. It was. Um, it was. This, I think it was a season ending. I think it was Ben that that happened. Okay. It was Ben Giroux, of Connor, a diver, who tore ligaments in his thumb while skiing. Oh, okay, that's what it was then. Okay, you're right, it was. So it was him, yep. At a high of 200 against Farmington. Coming wow. back. Wow. Very, yeah. one, one, one thing that, uh, that your daughter pointed out, she said, to be a good diver, you have to be reckless. Yes. That was, uh, she mentioned that on a couple of occasions when we yep. were talking. Yep. And, you know, and it's, it's, it's funny because we talk about how he went skiing and uh, tore his thumb. On more than one occasion when I was coaching the boys, and it's not an issue during the girls' season because it's fall. Sure. I'll tell those kids as we're getting close to that big meet, you don't ski. If it snows, tell your dad I give you a get-out-of-jail-free card. You don't have to shovel. <laughs> I don't want you getting hurt. Oh, very good. I yeah. haven't had any fathers call me yet, but my guess <laughs> is the kids are still out there shoveling. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We had that snowstorm around Halloween about five years ago. Yeah, so. there you go. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> And I'll tell the girls, I'll say, you know, you can tell your mom you don't have to do the dishes or vacuum for a couple of days. <laughs> Very good. It's, it, what you're trying to teach them there more than anything is a mindset. Don't do anything abnormal, anything foolish. Sure. Don't get hurt because it's a critical time. You're not only letting yourself down, you're letting your teammates down. So a lot of people count on you. Sure, so sure. You don't, want to jeopardize. Just, you don't want to jeopardize that in any way, shape, or form. It's the mental aspect of the coaching. Sure. Get them geared up. Being the coach, you have to be part coach, part psychologist, <laughs> part mentor. You have to wear about that, five different hats. That's an understatement. <laughs> A lot of emotions fly around in high school kids. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> hats off to you and all yeah. the coaches who uh, do it so well. One of the things I try to tell them when they're having that bad day, is use this as your escape. Oh, okay. Come down here, put it out of your head. And for two hours, just focus on your training. Sure. And while you mentioned that, there was one swimmer in particular that I wanted to uh, call attention to. I think he lost his mom at some point, and he, he used this as an escape. And I'm not sure. Jonathan Pikes might be yes. the, uh, the person? Yes. Yes. Only missed one practice because his mom passed away. Wow. Yeah. And that was something that uh, John McClure in our conversations, John was saying, he really credits a few of the young men in particular who had perfect attendance for the year and one particular gentleman, perfect attendance and practice all through four years. That's amazing. It, it is outstanding because one of the things that – um, is pulling on these kids are academics. A lot of these kids are uh, taking AP courses, so there's a, there's a big demand on their time for homework, exams, uh, and then a lot of them also participate in various other um, clubs. Could be uh, Model UN. You see a lot of that. There's another club, uh, sure. band, choir. Um, 
a lot so of demands on these kids' time. And, and you see it stressing them sometimes. So you try to work with them or tell them, hey, if you need to come a little late one day or leave a little early because you got a big exam, your best bet is not stress about it, but talk to me. You sure. Know, and let's, let's work through this. Because ultimately for these kids, athletics comes behind the academics. You know, there's not a lot of money out there for swimming. Right. <laughs> so you better get the grades. Exactly. <laughs> so there's, there's we'll give them a lot of latitude with their their exams. There's, there's one Michael Phelps every generation for every hundred thousand yep. uh, high school swimmers. I mean, it's and we know it's hard to make it in any sport, be it baseball, basketball, football, but it's All even harder in, in a sport like this. Sure. Sure, the numbers are just stacked against you, so you have to stress the academics. That's a point very well taken. Yeah. Nice back one somersault. Yeah. Got a six I from the far six. judge. Six and a half. Six and a half and a seven. Wow. There's the first discrepancy we've seen. Five and a half and a seven. Yeah, that's a that's the longest range that we've seen. Yep. Um, yeah, because it's among any of the judges so far. Very, very small. A few years back during the girls' season, uh, we had five girls qualify for the state tournament in diving. Oh, my. It's something that you don't see very often. What's, what's the typical number? Two. Two. Wow. Sometimes three. Wow. I think this year... There were, there was one on Connor and one on Paul. I think that was it between the two programs. One year where we had five, and only four can be entered. So we actually, in practice, had to have them dive off to see who the four were going to be that were going to represent the team. In wow! Talk about nerve wracking. I'll say. Talk about the mindset, John, of the kids that are swimmers who are not divers that are going through this extended period of wait right now. What, what's going through their minds, and what do you t what do you tell them typically to how to spend this time? Um, each swimmer has their own little routine that's going to get them in their zone, get them ready, and maybe try to visualize what your next race is. Okay. Uh, one of the things I like to teach pretty much, even in, say, a 50 freestyle, I mean, that event's come and gone now, but in a 50 freestyle, you're going to be racing you know, in the boys for 22 to 25 seconds. You should have that whole race mapped out in your mind before the race starts. You should know how many strokes before you take your first breath, how many strokes you're going to take after the turn before you take the second breath. Yeah. And you should practice it. And we do. But part of it is not only the training, not only the technique, but getting them mentally ready to perform the race. Sure. Um, you, know, you see some kids that will do a 53 and it'll take seven breaths. And they're, they're just killing themselves. I mean, you just don't need that many breaths in right. 25 seconds. Right. <laughs> uh, again, this is a sport. It's a little different than, say, running because you can breathe as often as you want. I mean, I'm not a track coach, but your face isn't in the water half the time or more than half the time. So, Right. One thing I've done, and again, like I said, not being a track coach, but if, if someone is familiar with track and maybe not with swimming, you kind of look at it as it's like a uh, almost a four to one. Um, demand on the body. If you swim a 53, that's probably more equivalent to someone running a 200. Okay. Uh, when you think about a 53 is going to take you in that 22 to 25 seconds, running a 200 is probably going to take you Same uh, range. About, about that range. Yeah. You know, so, uh, the kids swimming the 500, um, it's probably equivalent to running about a mile and a quarter time-wise. Okay. So, I think that helps sometimes. Yeah, that's a, um, it's a good cor correlation. 
Um, Someone doing a hundred free is kind of like a runner doing a four hundred. Sure. So. And while we're talking about that comparison, Sean Burke in particular is somebody who runs cross country and oh, runs okay. very, very well. Another runner is Sam Manny. Um, I think he might have been yes. the top cross country runner for Conrad. I'm not positive, but a tremendous cross country runner who uh, opts to swim during the winter season rather than the indoor track. Oh, my. So, so that's nice. And he's a very good um, distance swimmer for Conrad. And speaking of indoor track, hats off again to the Hall Warriors, state champions. Oh, really? I hadn't seen that. First first time since 1957. Wow. So a long, wow. long time coming, and, and congratulations to them. Yes. 60, 60 years. Right. Wow. So both Conard and Hall um, swim in the CCC West. Um, they have realigned the divisions a little bit by name. I think it's south north and south white and blue but you know historically i think ccc west sure as i do um, as well for all the years i've and, called and, football and all the other sports and for the last seven or eight years the uh conference title has been won by uh, either Conard hall or farmington this year southington uh looks like they're gonna take their uh first conference title so congratulations to coach evan uh, Tuttle over at Southington and sure. uh, the Blue Knights for their first uh, undefeated in conference play, John. Undefeated in conference play, which is pretty much what you have to do. This is a sport you can't often look for help from another team. If sure. Team A beats B, and B beats C. It's not likely that C is going to be there. You're not going to get that help. Right, right. Just and again, very the, rarely does that happen. Again, the winner of this meet tonight between Conard and Hall end up four and one in conference play. And that'll be second place. That'll be it? second. Yeah. It's it's very often when you look at the conference records, you see five and zero, oh, four and one, three and two, two and three, one and four, and zero oh and five. Yeah. Because it's just the way it seems to work out. Sure. It's the way the math is always aligned, yep. as it were. This is Nick Lazari on the board right now for the Hall Warriors. So the scores range from three to three and a half with two three and a halves on the board there. This looks like might be Andy getting up on the board for Connard, I think. Looks like a couple of the Connor boys might be tightening up over there. So they come all the way over to the far end of the pool, and we use those as continuous warm-up warm-down lanes. Oh, okay. So they're far enough away from the divers that it won't bother them. Uh, but at the same time, they want to warm up, limber up, yeah. and uh, yeah, get themselves you get tight, ready. Tighten up. Sit in. Maybe while we have a second here, just a quick shout out to uh, Cornerstone Aquatic Center. It's a, uh, I've yeah. been coming here now since 2008. Probably the nicest facility I've been in. The staff is wonderful. Um, this pool is crystal clear every day at practice. Um, it makes a difference, it, I'm sure. It does. And, you know, no matter who comes into this pool for uh, a meet, we always get you know, comments from the opposing um, opposing teams of what a nice facility. We've won a state meet here a couple times. Oh, okay. Uh, 22 teams will pour in. There'll be people around the whole deck. We'll get people around the other deck. Uh, obviously, standing room only, it's just packed. We'll have filled to capacity, even more than what we are here tonight. So. 
First class operation. And we, we And we thank them for accommodating us yeah. to do the broadcast as well. Yeah. They were highly, highly cooperative and uh, we certainly thank them. Happy to echo your sentiments for sure. sure what dive number we're on here but we got to be getting pretty close to the end of the competition good dive there with scores of four and a half through five and a half and dale you one of those first year divers for the hall warriors i thought i might have heard uh, john mcclure who's uh, announcing diving for us i thought i might have heard him say final round of dive but it looks like we've got uh, one dive left for each. Each uh, pass looks like that's an inward dive. And while we have a moment, the War Chief Sports Council would like to thank our many fine sponsors including those at the varsity level, and they include Low Tide Photography, Blue Plate, Dave Newman Photography, Fast Eddie, West Hartford Youth Basketball, West Hartford Travel Boys Basketball, Open Arm Christian Ministries, Final Cut Barbershop, Edward Connors Insurance, Stanley and Elaine Phillips, Beth Berry Brown of the William Ravis Agency, and West Hartford Girls Lacrosse. Thanks to one and all for your sponsorship of the Wars Chief Sports Council, and for more info, Go to their website, www.war-chief.net. That's war-chief.net. Pete, I was just talking with Bob, and um, three of these divers are seniors, and they're first-year divers. Well, that's something you don't see every year, I'm sure, John. Yeah, so they came out uh, as seniors, got on the board, uh, ruined their six dives so they could uh, contribute to the team's success. Mm -hmm. uh, so it looks like uh, Coach McClure will not only have to rebuild the swimming program, he's going to have to get Coach Coburn some, uh, some athletes to get on the board. Sure. And again, again, those uh, seniors that uh, we talked about, Dale Yu, Joe Marks, and uh, Joe Hockman. Nick Lazari is the uh, veteran of the uh, the foursome and, and doing well. I want to credit the Connor divers, if we could. So the counter divers, uh, Zachary Lagana, Nathaniel Rosado, Ben Giroux, David Birnbaum, and Andy Tran. I know Andy's a returning diver. Um, ben is, Nathan is, and I'm, I think Zachary is a uh, first-year diver and David's a first-year diver. So this is, again, an event that Connor's expected to win. Yes. And uh, they will widen their 35-27 lead that they attained through the four events of the swimming. Right. And, uh, again, with the inexperience, it wasn't... Uh, Obviously, result-wise, the past of years for Hall, but they did pull out a match over Northwest because of their diving. It was a and time that uh, the flu was running rampant. They only had 11 swimmers, and uh, they pulled it off at the end, and they pulled it off because they won in diving. I just heard that uh, tonight. I wasn't aware that they went into that meet with such a uh, short, short man team. Sure. Was, uh, and you win with 10, you're leaving a lot of lanes open which means the other team is scoring four points. In some cases, not by beating people, just by finishing a race legally. Sure, That's all, as long as you don't get DQ'd, right? right? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Coming up right after this will be the 100 butterfly. Mm -hmm. 
be between, um, I think, Ian Harker, who won a 200 freestyle. Okay. And Julian Flores. I think Julian might be a freshman. Um, I'm not sure about Ian, but uh, I think this is going to be very, very closely contested. Julian is a, is a freshman. Swam for the JCC Sharks. Oh, okay. And... Uh, very, very versatile, according to uh, your daughter, the head coach. That program uh, has sent quite a few swimmers uh, to the uh, high school teams this year. Along with some of the other, you know, one thing we're fortunate in this area is we have several feeder programs. In addition to the waves, you've got the JCCs, you've got uh, Oak. Oh, uh, uh, West Hartford Aquatic. We've got the Blue Devils out of uh, 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 So we've got, we've got a lot of club teams that get our kids at a young age and really get them going. Looks like the diving's over. Are, are they akin to uh, like AAU programs? It, it's exactly what it is. It's an AAU type program. Okay. What I'll do is I'll, I'll take a, a brief break. I'll go grab those diving sheets so we can have the scores and we can read off the uh, oh, top six scores. Terrific. The, uh, the we're going we're gonna to take a, sh a short break. John will go do that, and we're going to step aside. We're going to come back with more of the swimming competition. You're watching the swimming and diving meet here in West Hartford at Cornerstone Aquatic. Connard in front of Hall, pending the diving results by the count of 35 to 27. This is West Hartford High School Sports as presented by the War Chief Sports Council on Channel 5. We'll be back with more right after this. And welcome back, everybody, as we get set for the resumption of the swimming portion of our program tonight, as we get set for the fifth swimming competition. And, uh, John, you have some diving results for us. Yeah, so as as we thought going in, it uh, looks like a 1-2-3 finish for Connor. Um, in sixth place from Hall was Joe. In fifth place from Hall was Nick. In fourth place from Hall was Joe. In third place from Connor was David. In second place from Connard was Nathaniel, and Ben Giroux uh, won the event with a score of 203.25. A terrific Very, score for him. Anything over 200 is good, right? Absolutely, yep. So a 1-2-3 sweep for Connard in the diving competition, and what does that do for the points, John? Uh, that's a 13-3. Looks like Connard has... So 48 to 30 right now. Uh, 47 30. Because yep. we're at 34 because right. of that DQ in the IM. Exactly. So 47 so 30, kind of 17 point bulge as we get set for the next race. Yeah. Um, like I said, coming up, there's a couple of events that will be. Uh, what, is, what is this event? Oh, so here we, here we have the 100 fly. Uh, okay. Should have an outstanding race between uh, Harker and Flores. Uh, top two flyers for each of these teams. And keep in mind, Julian Flores for Connor is just a freshman. And you said Ian Harker on the other side, a sophomore. So a freshman against a sophomore, the big battle here. Right. So it looks like the 25 turn. Uh, Julian is, is off to a little bit of a lead, maybe half a body length. Uh, you're getting ready to come into the 50 turn. Uh, looks like he hit that wall right where he wanted going to be key to hold on now back half of a 50 a back half of the 100 butterfly is very very telling but uh, this looks like an outstanding outstanding race well it took a big breath for air there but he's got a body and a half almost two body legs um, we're not going to catch him today wow Julian Flores outstanding 
A 56-69. Wow. I, I think his best time had been in the 58s earlier this year. So that's um, what you were talking about earlier. Yeah, that's the I mean, adrenaline of Hall versus Connor. Yep, it, it sure is. And I'm looking, Tom Costello, who I'm not sure had been sub a minute, broke right through the 59s with a 58-82. So, uh, again, uh, just a tremendous race there. It looks like uh, Connor took uh, first. Second. And fifth. So that's a uh, 10, 11. 11, 11 5. 11, 5. 11, 5. Wow. 5. So 58-35. I'm looking at that, right? Yeah, lanes uh, five and three. Wow. There's no way Coach Pollard expected a 1-2 in that event. So we thank John. John's going to stay with us here at the scorer's table. Bob Swain joins us. Bob, welcome to the broadcast. Great to be here, Pete. And tell us what we're seeing in this uh, event, the right. sixth swimming event. Right. We're seeing our same sprint freestylers in the 100 free, so four laps of the freestyle. And we expect Paul, sophomore Jack Hosey to really take control of this event. Jack, again, has five of the best times, different events uh, for Hall this yes. year. Yes, and he terrific won the as a junior. Free, which is usually the similar race to the 100 free. Our same you know, swimmer typically will win both events. Just going to bring Jack's John. Got a comfortable lead going into the last lap. Just going to bring in John really, really quickly. Who for Connor do we expect in this race? Uh, it looks like Ben Arkey, the freshman, um, Austin Comrie, and Colby Roy. It looks like uh, while uh, Jack took first, looks like Connor may have come in for a two-three-four, which will win the event nine seven. So yeah, Bob, it, they're they're all of a sudden now up of almost thirty points. Yeah, unless something unexpected happens, Connor certainly has taken a very comfortable lead. Uh, Jack did win the event, though, with a nice time of 50.35, which is, I think it is the best time. While we have you here, just want to say hats off to you and, uh, and your wife for uh, just an amazing job with your kids. First family of swimming in West Hartford, according to uh, head coach John McClure. <laughs> Probably following John's legend. He, back in the day, his own family was uh, multiple swimmers. But thank you, Pete. But those who don't know the Swain family story, four boys have swum here at Hall in the last 13 years. Yeah, that's always, right. But, but this it, is uh, the bittersweet end. And so, uh, uh, always a highlight, though, this Hall Connor meet is really the sort of the, one of the pinnacles of the season. You've had Rob, you've had Jack, you've had Ethan, and now Andrew in his uh, ultimate race here. That's right. Yeah, so uh, Andrew's last dual meet, and uh, I wish I could say it was closer for Hall, <laughs> but nevertheless, it's just as exciting as the 12 that preceded it. And which event are we watching here? We are watching the second heat, which is typically referred to as the exhibition heat of the 100 freestylers. So, oh, okay. so the first heat counted for points. This gives the chance for uh, additional swimmers to swim the event. And then this race will be followed by the five free, which, as John mentioned earlier, is the longest event of the meet at 20 laps. Wow. Certainly an endurance test for sure. Yeah, absolutely. It is a stamina test. Talk about talk about your boys for, for a second while you can. Tell us uh, what they're up to, what they've done. Well, uh, only one continued swimming. I think, as John mentioned, our son Jack, who... Uh, was a strong breaststroker, went on to swim at Holy Cross for four years, was captain of the team, swim in the Patriot League. So uh, very much a balance of academics and swimming, much like the whole. It's an outstanding programs. school, it really is. Yeah, so that was really a great experience. I mean, college swimming at a school that has a nice balance. Uh, Holy Cross is in the Patriot League, but like a lot of schools, it's, it's, it's not just about the swimming, it's, it's about the academics first. But it was nice to continue that for him. Don't be bashful. As I look across the board, I can see Jack's names on that Hall High School record board in the 100 breaststroke. Yeah, that, thank you. It's, uh, it seems to be safe this year, but uh, Andrew's getting as close to it as he can, meet by meet. You know, it's funny that you talk about that because John McClure said, hey, most 
of the record times are recent times, that the records to be broken. Yeah, that is true. There are some exceptions uh, which go back even 30 years. Yeah. But it seems like both programs, times do get faster. Talked about Peter Landerberg with the 48.19 and the 100-meter uh, freestyle. He set the record back in 1978. That's exactly. 39 years. Ago. Exactly. Hey, tell us about this race now. So this is the five free. This is 20 laps. It's really a matter of both endurance, stamina, and, and pacing yourself. You know, like any event, a swimmer wants the best time, but you really have to conserve your energy, know your pace, and, you know, hopefully stay on pace, but have something for the end. Because, like, whether a short race or long race, it can come down to the finish. And this is crucial for Hall. They're trailing now 67-42. And after this, I believe we have five events remaining. That's right. So Hall has do, does have two strong 500 freeze swimmers and freshman Connor Skarzynski, as well as senior Andrew Swain. They have been sort of battling each other all season. And uh, it should be a close race, I know. I think senior Sean Burke for Connor is the top 500 free swimmer for that team. And... Uh, like a lot of swimmers, we should expect best times of the season, if not certainly strong times. We talked about Connor Skarzinski, just a freshman for Hall, swims on the USS team. He does, and he's had an excellent se season. Very versatile swimmer, distance swimmer. Unfortunately, though, he's part of that group of the Hall swimmers who have suffered from illness. He's coming. I think this is his first meet back after missing. I believe two meets, so it's great to have him return, but uh, he will definitely be, you know, working through these 20 laps. So and Andrew coach. has taken a lead. I think he's followed by Sean Burke in lane three. Andrew is hoping certainly to get best time. He swam this event at the Class L meet last season and uh, where he did get a best time, but this year he's been doing well, but hoping to continue to drop. Just to elaborate on your point about uh, illness and injury, John McClure, the head coach, said, hey, we've had more manpower games lost this year than any other year than his 41 years. It's amazing. Yeah, that's right. It was an unusual year, and swimming is a, a sport both about technique, but it's really about stamina. So being derailed by an illness can really hurt a swimmer's endurance and ability to sort of um, – achieve the kind of times they expect. So it, it's, it's hard. Swimming, like, unlike most sports too, in the winter is a long season. You know, these boys are practicing actually six days a week. They're up every Saturday morning for 7.30 practice. Wow. So it takes a toll. Sure. And unfortunately, uh, illness did strike the team this year and the, the team got through it, but it's left an impact. And I see that the uh the swimmers are helped out uh, by some of their teammates over there telling them how far and how many yeah, more laps to go. Yeah, and there is go. some strategy to that. They they do have a, a, lane, a lap counter at the end of the, la the lane, and uh, most swimmers try to communicate with their lap counter if they need to pick up their own pace to do some sort of signal underwater or give them some sort of message. Because as I said, you know, they really don't know if they're on pace, off pace. They can see the swimmers to the left and right, but uh, they do count on that that kid at the end of the lane to give them some sort of message. And we see that four of the young men are on lap 13, about to go to 14. That's right. So, so the Connor swimmer is in second, followed by Connor Skarzynski, but Andrew does seem to have a comfortable lead. And you'll notice when it gets to the 18th lap, a bell will ring, notifying the swimmer that two lanes to go, two oh. laps to go. So what you've seen so far in this race, Bob, pretty much according to plan, or no? Yeah, I think Andrew, uh, it was nice having the two days off from school to come to a meet rested as opposed sure. to a seven or eight hour school day. That's a great point. Followed by a swim meet. So th certainly these kids have benefited from that today specifically. But uh, I think Paul felt this was a good event for them. And you can see that Connor has dominated several events that preceded this, but... I think we will make up some points here. And again, they need to make up 25 points before the end of the night, unfortunately, for their Which, uh, perspective. But yeah, unfortunately, Connor, probably Connor is could, an impossibility. But uh, keep, it's, keep, it, keep swimming, though, right? Yeah, you know what? And it's it's about uh, race for race, the excitement. It doesn't stop even if whatever team's ahead or behind. 
There's the bell that Bob Swain was talking about. So Andrew has two laps left. He seems to be on pace for a good season time. You, know, you can tell he's still sprinting to the end. It's a very close race. It's second and third. Sean Burke, Connor Skorzynski, it's really going to come down to if someone has a kick at the end. And Connor, from the Hall perspective, really needs to win that. Yeah, Connor's coming on strong. Andrew will finish the race with a 5-10-10, which is the season's best time by about seven seconds. And he saved his best for last. But check out our second and third place. It's going to come down to the finish. Sean Burke held off. I think that's the season's best time for, for Sean at 525.56. So nice, nice swim, Sean. Then it followed by Connor Skarzynski with 2575. Again, nice finish. Almost beat him out. But I, I will say I think Connor is about eight seconds off his season's best. And I, I would attribute that to illness. Okay. Okay. Again, he's battled through it. He, ha he has battled. Through. But, you know, while this is the pinnacle, the dual meet season, um, the team now focuses on the state meets. Okay. The Class L prelims, which is in two weeks, followed by the finals. So most of these strong swimmers will have a chance to rest, regroup, and refocus their energies on that. So John has done the revised scoring for us, and it's 73-52. Hall able to pick up four points in that race. They outscored Connor 10-6 in that one, still trailing the overall 73-52. Yeah, 73-52 with, I believe, only three, three, four events left. So, uh, again, unless Hall stops swimming tonight, I think, uh, I mean, Connor would rather stop swimming. It, it looks like a Connor victory of maybe two Maybe early to say that, but uh, we'll still see some great races ahead. This is one of the most exciting events of the meet. It's the 4x50 free relay. Okay. So you'll see, again, the freestylers come out. And like a lot of relays, it can, it, as we saw in the medley relay, it can come down to the last, the anchor leg. So, uh, Do you usually save your best for last? Is that the exactly. strategy? Classically, your second best may start with your your anchor is your strongest. So I would expect the Hall lineup should have Jack Hosey as the um, anchor. Oh, well, no, I, let me take that back. Jack is being saved for the last relay of the event, the four by 100 free relay. So Ian Harker will be Hall's relay. So we're, we're led off by Jack Russo. And Jack Russo, a sophomore. Yeah, Jack. Jack actually had an excellent time in the 2IM, uh, met a state qualifying time in that event for the first time this season. Oh, good for so him. again, one of the versatile swimmers in the sophomore class. And you can hear the noise behind us yeah. as it's uh, very, Leonard's very emotional. Lead, followed oh, wow. by Hall, the second swimmer, Nick Janoulis. And Spandon Rath has a about a body length lead. Tom Costello dives in, followed by senior captain Matt Cashman. And in the relays we've talked about, points-wise, only first, second, and third get points. So uh, it's not just about the first and second place teams. Sure. You know, there's always a battle for third place as well. So as of right now, it appears uh, Connor's got about a body length overhaul for that third position. Do you see this as an opportunity for Hall to slice further into Connor's overall lead? Well, at this point, Connor is in the first and third position. They're going to oh. win the race. Senior Austin brought the, brought the race home with a victory, time of 135.46, and Connor got third place. So they've only increased, actually. Wow. That so again, a year ago was Hall winning 98 to 80, and it looks like on par for Connor to get their revenge. And it's interesting, because as you look at it, Andrew, over the last five years, the teams have alternated wins from year to year. They have, absolutely. You know, not one team has dominated. There hasn't been a, you know, a strong streak. It has been back and forth. And, uh, you know, different swimmers come and go, and the depth of the two teams can vary, but uh, 
Yeah, this year it appears to be a Connard victory. The, the updated score presently is Connard 83 points to Hall's 56. So Connard, with a first and third place, captured 12 points to, to Hall's four. Wow. So they pick up eight there. A ten, I'm sorry, 10 points to Hall's four. 10 to four, so they pick up six, and the overall lead 27, 83-56. Oh, okay. The, the magic number is uh, John Smichetti telling us 11. They need 11 points to get to that 94. And that would give them the victory here in the 2016-17 season. So in this race for Hall, we've got one of the senior captains, Jonathan Pikus, as well as sophomore Ryan Arnold, part of a strong sophomore class for Hall. And a newcomer to the Hall team, Tommy Sullivan. He's doing a great job in the freestyle, and tonight he's swimming the backstroke as well. And called by John McClure, the most improved swimmer on the squad. Yeah, you see his talent, particularly as a sprint freestyler. So I think the team can expect great things from him in the future. He's a sophomore, but just a first-year swimmer. That's right. You know, swimming, you know, you see, you see swimmers come in throughout the years who, if they've got the drive and the work ethic, they can really improve over the course of both the season and the span of their time on the, on the team. So tell us about the next event, Bud. So the next event is the 100 back, so four laps of the backstroke. Um, I would expect, based on what seeing the medley relay, that Connor Rory, Connor Rory Williams should should be a strong swimmer in this event. You can see uh, we've got a pretty even start. Ryan Arnold has had a great season. He, he swam backstroke at States last year as a freshman. Has had a, also a strong sophomore year, and uh, it's a tight race between Rory. Ryan Arnold's best time in the 100 backstroke, 102.59 so far this year. That's right. I don't think he's achieved his best time from last year, but again, anything can happen in this meet. Rory and Ryan both kind of battling it out. As in most events, the turn can be critical, so we'll see you know, who surfaces ahead of the turn. Rory looks like he's taking control of this race. So Rory's captured first, followed by Ryan. Both swimmers. 10108 and 10187. So strong times for both. Rory Williams, third year swimmer, he's a junior. And uh, had his best meet so far against Northwest Catholic overall. But he's saving his best for last year tonight, certainly in what is probably the most important one to him for the season. That's right. Certainly for the dual season. Right. And, and I think for most of these swimmers, they, they hope to uh, get best times. Get best times at states, both at the prelims, finals, which again is in, in mid March. So, um, you know, these next two weeks gives them both an opportunity to train. Um, and most of the coaches, they, they have a, an approach to training where they work them hard in the beginning. I want to ask you about that. Yeah, ease off a little bit. Then ease the end. off. So their body's rested, their muscles are rested. And what you'll see is most, most swimmers, you'll even see significant drop in a championship meet based on that kind of training approach. Okay. Whereas in the middle of the season between, you know, you know, most of these boys have two, sometimes three meets a week. Sure. So, it, you know, it's a lot. So this next event, also we're gonna see four swimmers who are really gonna be neck and neck throughout this race. It's the 100 breaststroke for your four laps of breast. For Hall, we have, um, again, Jack Russo's. Andrew Swain is coming off his victory in the 500. Tom Castello and Jordan Speed. So it's going to be tight. You know, all these boys have done well in this meet to date. Andrew just swam 20 laps, but has touched the wall first. After the first 25, we'll, we'll see what happens. Want to just briefly talk about Tom Costello, a senior, a four year swimmer. And uh, Jen Pollard said the one swimmer on uh, her team that really rises to the occasion. He a does. Big spot here. Yeah. And we saw that in the flight. I think Tom. Costello easily got the best time. 
But in this race, like any, a swimmer can fade. They've got to be strong through each turn and to the bitter end. So Andrew looks strong. Jack Russo, you see, toward the end. Yeah. Don't count him out for a second or third place. We saw that in the IM. But Andrew, unless he fades, which he looks, he's looking good. And that was a nice time for Andrew. Season's best, if not a career best, a 104.83. Congratulations, that's great. Yeah, so he'll be pleased with that. But you can see, I think all, both Connor guys, 106.38, 106.77, those are excellent times. And they should all do well at the state level in the Class L with those with those times. So, And again, um, refresh our memory, when's that coming up exactly? And uh, That prelims are in a week and a half. Okay. And then for all the classes, the final, the class L, whether it's double L, L, M, or S, are held at Wesleyan University. Oh, okay. So, so all teams compete in the same pool. And then what happens after that meet, much like track and field, the top 24 times across the four classes, those swimmers come back the following Saturday for the state open. Oh, very good. Which is held at Yale University's very kind of iconic aquatic center so sure if harry potter ever had to film a pool it would be <laughs> yale's pool yeah so, um, i'm quite quite familiar with it I yeah was, exactly uh, had the pleasure of being the voice of yale athletics in the early 90s so yeah uh, so that's always a thrill for those students those swimmers that do make the state open but but the class l final is is still a thrill and um you know that's both an individual meet but it's also about team you know team points last year I believe it was a battle between New Canaan and Darianne okay. um, for the Class L. We see the FCAC well represented on an yeah, annual absolutely. basis. Yeah. And in the double L as well. I think Greenwich has won the double L and the state open for, I believe, approximately 25 straight years. Oh, my goodness. They have dominated. The Cardinals getting it done. So this is our final event of the night. It's the 4 by 100 free relay. And again... We're going to see Jack Posey, anchor of the Hall team. He should pull his weight. However, uh, as we saw in the 50 and the 100 free, Connor does have a lot of depth in sprint freestyle. So it's going to be a, a tight race to the end. Ian Harker has led off the Hall. He's also a strong, very versatile swimmer. And again, just a sophomore, so you get two more just years to watch him. Exactly. And Connor's led off by Sean Burke, also a 500 swimmer. So he, you know, he's coming off swimming 20 laps. So as John talked about earlier, this isn't, you know, the Olympics where these guys are waiting around for three hours or a day between races. It's, it's really impressive. Yeah, it's grueling. Yeah. I mean, that's the best word for it. That's a great, right. uh, great adjective. So freshman Connor Skarzynski just dove in. He's got a very nice stroke. He looks very smooth into his first turn. Connor's got Sam Nanny. Want to talk about Sam Nanny a little bit. Another senior and four-year starter. Excellent cross-country runner. And that has to help in uh, a situation like this. Yeah, I think a lot of these guys are um, multi-sport athletes. You know, although most of them had swimming experience back to when they were, you know, third, fourth, fifth grade and winter swim teams before high school. I think most of them swim other sports, too. And sure. And, uh, you know, help them to stay fit, help them to stay competitive. Exactly. It keeps that interest strong. Sure. So senior captain Matt Cashman is dove in. He's up against Rory Williams, who we've seen some really excellent swimming from tonight. So Matt has got to hold on to this lead for Hall, but I think we should expect uh, a strong finish from Jack Posey as long as Matt can maintain or stay close to the lead but as you can see Rory's making up that lead and coming out of the turn 
we'll see how they both finish that last lap. Highly competitive for sure. It is. And, and despite Connard's comfortable lead in the meet, the excitement doesn't end. So, so Jack Paul, Paul just going to say you're Bob for pride because they've already lost the, the overall, exactly. but they can cut into that final margin. Right. Connor has met that magic number of 94. The current the current score is 94-61. So this is about pride in the last race at this point. Sure. And it's Hall Connor. So. It's Hall Connor. It doesn't get better in high school rivalry than these two schools. Right? Oh, I couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. So Jack has finished strong and, and certainly the Hall team is, is really hopeful for some best times and a, a strong performance at State for this swimmer. Sure. Jack will certainly looking forward be a team leader and a, and a captain next year as a senior. Exactly. Well, actually, Jack's a, a sophomore. Oh, a sophomore. So oh, I was missing more. Yeah, Adam. I was told he was a junior. Okay. So Connor, while they didn't win the race, they got second and third, which uh, again so sometimes can be just as important as the first place. Their total points could be over a hundred then for. That's right. Uh, they're going to finish. They're going right, to finish right, the meet at a hundred. At a hundred. To Hall sixty-nine. Wow. So you can see though the first, the first place finishes were really, somewhat evenly distributed, but I think it was it was the depth of some of Connard's freestyle events in those first couple relays. And that's a point that uh, both you and John have uh, hit home here tonight, and it's absolutely true. That's right. The depth We're talking the depth factor, John, uh, in the final analysis is uh, proving most yeah. beneficial to Connard here tonight. Yeah, because there were a couple races where uh, I think the 53 and the 100 free where Jack took first place, but Connard still won the event. So, um, you know, that takes the event 9-7 in Connor's favor, even though they don't get first place. So it, it did show up there. Are you surprised with the overall margin of victory? I'm shocked. Uh, like I said, I looked at all the data for both teams this weekend, and I saw it coming down to the last relay. I did not see a scenario where this would be over at the backstroke, and there were no you know, big disqualifications. And when we had one, it actually went against Connor. Um, so it just looks like um, an outstanding day for the, the Chieftains. Um, and that's simple. <laughs> yeah, congrats to him. Bob, other impressions for you in addition to the depth factor? Yeah, I, I would think, I think a lot of the countered swimmers certainly had best times based on, you know, the information we discussed about swimmers' times. So, you know, being pumped up for me, the excitement of this rivalry certainly... When swimmers show up and give their best performance, you're going to see it in the results. I mean, I think the Hall swimmers swam well. I don't think they were specifically off their times. And we saw some great times from Hall. But I, I do think many of the Connard swimmers really performed well, if not season's best. So certainly the depth in combination with some great finishes and top times proved, you know, proved victory for them. So... Hats off to Connor, certainly. Congrats to you and Andrew, and good luck in the States. Thanks. Thanks, Pete. It was great to you know, be here tonight, and certainly great for the War Chiefs to support this, this meet. Look forward to it in the future, and we'll look forward to watching it in the future. Has Andrew picked a uh, event for the state meet, his two events yet? Because that 500 today, 510 was very impressive. I think last year he swam the 501 breast. And there was a little bit more rest, obviously, than the dual meet because there are multiple heats. So I, I predict he did qualify in the IM, but I think based on um, time, he got down to a 505 last year at States. Okay, that's very State impressive. Meet. Good. Yeah. So I'm, I think the conditioning over the next two weeks, he'll set his sights on some, some time drop, too. So it's tough to swim with the one breast following it, but I think... Relative to the other swimmers, it's probably too strong as the Well, good luck to them at, at the good state meet because uh, I think 
They're in Class L this year, and Connors in Double L. So okay. they'll be in different classes, so they won't see each other there. Yeah, I think it's as, as we were discussing, it's a, it seems to be a battle of Fairfield County at the state level the past couple of years between Darien and New Canaan. Yeah, and you can never leave out uh, Greenwich and Fairfield Prep, Yes, though. certainly at the double L. At the double yes. L. And oh, yes, you're talking L versus double L, right. Correct, but yeah. certainly at the state open. Greenwich dominated. Prep has that great advantage. They recruit from 27 different towns. Must be nice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I just wanted to personally thank both of you gentlemen to, uh, to join us tonight. You were very insightful, handled the job perfectly well, and... Uh, Hope to have you back next year. Even though you won't have your son here, hope to have you back. Oh, I'm sure I'll be back as a spectator cheering on both teams for that matter. And again, it was my pleasure to be here. First time having done something like this, and I, I truly enjoyed working with both of you. So. Oh, you're great at A, both of you. So uh, look forward to look forward to the fall, too, with the, with the girls. Go. Except I, um, I'll be on the other side. Right. Pretty soon it's going to be time for Coach Pollard to get wet. <laughs> My guess is uh, the celebratory. Uh, well, we want to grab her before she goes in the pool. Uh, we can. Probably not going to happen. We can try. Okay. But well, it's, it's usually pretty quick. If she heads in that, I can try calling her over. I got her. Okay. I was able to get her attention for you. Thanks, Bob. Bob Swain, John Smokety. We w we're going to hope to have Coach Pollard uh, momentarily. We're going to step aside and come right back with the interview right after this. <coughs> this event alternating wins between these two schools over the last five years that's amazing yeah it, you know every year is different and um, some years you get you get a really strong class and we have a great senior class this year and a great incoming class that we had this year so you know Paul had a great team last year and just how it works out for us your dad graded as an A tonight he was fantastic we can't wait till you sit in that chair uh, next fall I look forward to it Jen, thank you so much. Congratulations thank on the you. win. And good luck to Dustin Pedroia and the Red Sox. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Jen Bowler joining us. Tom Costello, congratulations thank on the win. Thank you. thank you. What's it mean to go out as a senior in your senior year and uh, beat Hall? Well, it's certainly pretty meaningful. Um, we actually did win the CCC this year, which is a little bit disappointing. And I've had like an ongoing rivalry with uh, Andrew Swain over at Hall. So we trade off wins year to year in breaststroke, and this year he got me. So, you know, it's a mix of emotions. You've had the two days off from school the last two days. Did that help with the stamina factor at all tonight? I think that did help with the stamina. I just realized that like halfway through the meet, I forgot to do all my homework. So, you know, it's good and bad. Going to burn the midnight oil on that yeah, one. for sure. Well, congratulations oh, on uh, the victory, and good luck going for them. Thank you very much. Okay, Tom Costello joining us along with Jen Pollard. The uh, victorious Connor Chieftains tonight, a little more lopsided than they had expected, but they win going away 100-69 to as they defeat the Hall Warriors tonight at Cornerstone Aquatic.
thanks to one and all for your association with this great Sport Chief Council presentation of Sports in the Winter. This ends our seven-game winter package. Look for us to come back in the spring of baseball and softball and volleyball for you. And uh, thanks to everybody. Diana on the other side of the camera right here, to James, to Meredith, and of course to our friends at the Warrior Chief Sports Council, led by Paul McConnell and Dennis Swalton. Pete Lamoureux, thanks for watching tonight. Again, the final score for the final time at the Cornerstone Aquatic Center. It was the Connor Chieftains 100, the Hall Warriors 69.